Hello everybody, good evening. We are welcome here at the live session again, second part actually of the Symphonias. We are practicing the Symphonias together. Aina is trying to log in my own live stream actually on my tablet computer so can I could read your chat. So it's all making me a little bit nervous, all this technical stuff. It's actually surprising that it works um, to me. So I just check here if I can read the chat on this, on this computer. So again, I'm sorry for the technical things in the, hey, good evening, Michael. There it is, the chat. We have Rodrigo. Arian Bay and Costas is there. So thank you for being here. Thomas is joining. Okay, so the technical stuff, I'm always wondering why it works and it's actually great. And now Anya is being able on the live chat to do twists on the live uh, stream and I hear myself talking on the tablet. So that's okay. We'll see how it goes. So we have, I have added the second camera, second webcam, as you can see here, it's pointing on the score. Hopefully you can read my fingerings, my pencil here. And okay, while well, people, drop, people dropping in, I just can tell you today we were, that's really off topic, on, in Germany actually, on Fotokina. And we went actually to visit some, you know, that's the world's largest photo uh, graphic fair and video tools. And you cannot imagine what you see there just to see what is all available on live stream. And actually many, many, many brands are focusing toward YouTube live stream is actually unbelievable. So, but for the time, and very complicated, really very complicated. So for the time being, I have added the webcam to the score on the keyboard and sound. I hope that's okay. I just will have myself on the screen. Okay. I think that will work. Okay. What did we do last week for those of you who weren't here? just give you a brief summary i'm practicing the symphonias of bach by from scratch and that might surprise you that i haven't played them before but um, i didn't play the piano before i was 18. i didn't play harpsichord or another keyboard instrument but the organ and when i came in amsterdam in the conservatory in high school so to say I started the piano after two years, it became my main instrument and I switched over the symphonias and inventions to the uh, Walter Peter Klavier for the part of Bach. And so I never catched up with playing the symphonias either or the um, inventions. And so there's Anya, how is he managed? The sound is good, Thomas writes. Some lagging sometimes, yeah. It should be okay. Sometimes YouTube is buffering these, uh, these things. It's, it's hard to tell what, what, what's happening. So let's try this. And the side note, if thing, this stream will go up long, uh, online on next Saturday and Sunday. Next Saturday we will have Pachelbel, the Aria Sebaldina. That's next Saturday is the 1st of October. And then probably the live stream, this live stream will go online on Friday or on Sunday. So if you have ideas or suggestions or things I didn't read in the chat, also concerning technique and this technology, Please write it there. The comment section of YouTube live stream is not copied online when I upload this video. So YouTube is deleting the comment section, which is stupid, but it's like, like that. And uh, so please go there in the comment boxes and I read what your ideas and suggestions are. So to uh, uh, um, 
to continue what, with what I was telling is that I just didn't play the Symphonias or the uh, Inventions before this. So I'm really, really playing them from scratch and many of them I haven't, certainly the Symphonias I haven't heard much, few times. So also that might be surprising to you. I'm playing so much musical Bach and devoting so much of my time to Bach. And why not having listened, having listened to the Symphonias before much more? It's just a matter of time. And I think it's with a lot of you, if you are a musician, um, that we devote much of our time at our keyboard. It's not a good habit. Listening is really enriching your uh, view on music, but that's how it is. So last time I was telling you that I prepared three symphonias with the fingerings. We did part of the fourth and that I finished. And so we can continue with the fifth and we will have four parts in this live stream. We will have, I will go through the fourth one, just try to read it, check the fingerings, maybe comment on some things. And then we will make fingerings together um, from a part of the fifth symphonia, which is a very strange piece, actually. We talk a little bit about that. Then I return to the first, which I practiced a little bit last week. I haven't prepared that further, but I'm going just to practice that with you, I, how I normally practice that in daily life, so to say. And if we still have time, I want to make these sessions about 45 minutes we will have a look on the second one, which is a very, it's a gorgeous piece. And that I haven't practiced, the fingering of that is ready. So um, we can go through that very, um, what I say, very slowly. So there we go. So I start with the Symphonia number four, which we did the fingering last week. And as I said, I have finished it this week, actually yesterday. I hope that this webcam is doing its job and giving you some details of the score. I can bring it closer when we make fingerings together later. And when I turn the page, and this is a very stupid place to start with, I have to turn the webcam as well. So today at Fotokina, we saw very fancy cameras actually. That it's, it's incredible what, what gear is out there that you could uh, connect to an external device and actually Anya could just from behind her computer click and adjust all the camera settings but let's keep it like we have now so I hope you can read it so there we go I play it very slowly and what I try to do when I what I should do actually but I'm not always doing that because music is music and we have develop a kind of um, inter um, we interpret while we're practicing and we try I, I think I may speak for all of us we try to play it while we practice it and actually we shouldn't we should practice it and by playing it very slowly um, you get a kind of insight as well in the structure of the music and what I really Try to do then, if I'm really very disciplined, like I have to be tonight with you, because you're watching on my fingers and you will tell me if I do something not correct or not good and wrong against my own sayings. That was a joke, of course, but you can. Um, then the best thing is to play a not faster than your eyes can read. And you could say, I feel it like that, is that you play it just below the tempo that your brain can, that allows your brain to control everything. So every note should be read, should be played very consciously and later of course you get rid of that, you play a little bit faster, you, you Auto, the things get automized, automized, that's very bad English, I think, but you know what I mean. There's an automization that going, and of course that allows you to, uh, to play the piece. We can talk about that later in other sessions. So there we go. So 
I try to have the emphasis on the right spot so that I play slower, but I play in a kind of structured tempo, so heavy. Try to adapt my articulation. Also playing slower is wonderful to practice drills. Don't rush there. But when you have big jumps, uh, yeah, you should release the key very softly, just to the opposite of what your brain is telling you, rushing to the new position. So, but what you get then is this. So you will be will be arriving too early. You have time. Certainly, we're practicing slow. Make use of that because this relaxed transition of your hand will get in your in, into your motoric feeling, and you will do it the same way when you play faster. And so that was not correct. I wanted to say actually that's kind that's part of the exercise that Bach is writing here, it's just your jumps. And now I know I'm losing concentration on my left hand, so that comes that fast. you have a kind of, you have actually the team entrance in the left hand. And now you have a sequence of team entrances of fragments of that and I, I don't hear them like I should hear them. practicing actually now again but but you, you I think you can hear that the team entrances and the, the repetitions repeats of the of the uh, fragments of the team entrance were clear were, were much clearer now and it's hard to explain what I changed so just listen to them I could hear them here while we're practicing this piece in the coming weeks this is difficult you have tom team entrance or the fragment of that but at the same time the e f is going to the e and is diminishing in, in volume team making decrescendo That's really hard. By the way, Anya is on the chat. If you, if I don't read your your questions, he will wave to me. Or oh, she's already saying something. Is it number four? It's number four that we're playing now. Yeah, it is. We can see the the whole. Uh... You can't see the whole, it's written here, symphony number four, it's maybe a little bit small. What happens if I just go a little bit closer? The problem is I should be able to read the notes myself still, and now he's hunting. So that's a problem. So sorry for that, you are all in this kind of experimental group. 
so to say. Now he's hunting again. So I just turn this. Okay. And if he keeps hunting, so the autofocus, I have to um, switch autofocus off. And now we're going to do a very tricky thing. I am going to turn you, and there should come the. <laughs> okay. There it is. Okay, we continue. <laughs> So this is very awkward. First finger in the left hand, so I take five in the left hand here, the A. I don't know if you can see that. It's this one. And then here you have the D entrance. And I take this with the left hand. And I don't have to switch fingers, I just take my first finger on the new A. So it's very, very easy actually. And in the right hand you have this difficult. We talk about it later. So I'm slowing down here because I really want to be able to hear everything that goes on here. And you have practically three voices playing together. And by playing it that slow and that um, conscious, I don't know if that's correct English, but you know what I mean. I make sure that I really remember every note. So I really not go faster than I can read the notes. And if I would sight read this, if you would ask me play it as you can play it, I, I could play it faster. But then I would switch to what I which students often would call that's a kind of emergency plan. If you are sight reading and if you're playing faster then you can read and you really really can hear the notes and really can you have to be able to read a little bit further than you're actually playing. If you play too fast to that you kind of dealing with emergency situations all the time and that's that's actually a bad thing for practicing. If I practice this like this, I will really very rapidly learn the piece. And so you are as well. fingering here hitch so I just jump with my first finger on the right hand I go to the four on the B flat and I just go with the fifth finger on the B to the C so I don't change fingers on the same notes you get a small articulation but that's fine there incredible music so I just went through the piece a little bit too much emphasis on the musical performance ideas actually just to um, go with you through the fingering that I finished and then maybe I look on the chat okay so then we continue with number five do a few lines of fingering there talk a little bit on the autumn ornamentation which is really weird here and I will change the position of the 
And by the way, I don't know if you see this little tripod. <laughs> it's a very old one. German brand, I think 1950. Long story how I come to that on that for another time. Okay, you just leave comments if you are not able to see fingering. I, maybe I should change it because I should be able to write and I'm right handed. So I just change you. Don't get dizzy. And again, you all in beta version, so to say. <laughs> I don't know if this works. I will hear it from you. So this is B flat, uh, E flat major, I'm sorry. I'm just side reading now. And it starts with really awkward uh, ornaments. I don't know if you have played this piece. And I tell you about the ornamentation of the symphonias and actually on all, um, on all the um, actually on all Bach works but especially the symphonias and the, and the inventions that's a very particular case because uh, if I remember well I should look it up actually but if I remember well there are four copies three or four copies I think one is in Bach's handwriting or two of them are in Bach's handwriting one out of the um, Klavierbüchlein of Willem Friedrich van Bach then I think you have a copy which is a little bit later, 1723 or something. And the other dates I should uh, look up, but you have a, again a later uh, copy and then you have one made by Gerber, I think. And I think the third one is a copy that's made by a student of Bach. And all the ornamentation was typical is that they, they dif there is a different kind of ornamentation. So the later copies have more ornaments than in the earlier ones. And certainly the Bach handwritings have the, the least ornaments. There is in the early uh, Bach manuscripts, um, an addition of later ornaments and probably that's in Bach's handwriting towards the end of his life. So what we have here and I'm playing from the first Bach Gesellschaft edition, so the 19th century edition of the Bach works, um, which is actually uh, um, the Neue Bach Ausgabe is the second edition of that. And this uh, edition that you can buy in Dover, which is very handy for page turning, is a very good edition. You, you will find, you won't find many, many, many wrong um, prints. So the ornaments you see here is actually the addition of all ornaments that exist from the manuscripts. And probably um, that's very typical, typical for Baroque music and for Bach in particular also that they added more ornaments than, than they initially uh, noted down. So um, that means, that doesn't mean that the very sober uh, versions of the manuscript of the invention of the symphonias um, are wrong or should be altered or should be have additional ornaments but it means that you can add ornaments and that it was a, was a practice to do so and I'm telling you this in this particular piece because I went through it just before the live stream and I, I as again I never practiced it and I didn't know that this piece very well and it feels awkward sometimes to play all the ornaments like for instance here you have first this this mordent and then the turn you would expect it's like doubling the ornaments and so what what uh, what musicologists think is that the manuscript written by by students and also the later Bach scores but certainly the students which is in between you have the first manuscript of Bach and then you have to probably later addition that Bach made. So the in-between uh, manuscripts, they are also in-between of ornamentation. And one thing I read that in the Neumann, this beautiful book on ornamentation, that he assumes that that might be a reflection of how Bach played those pieces for them. It, it makes sense, actually. So this is a little bit overdone, I think. So let's see what we play. This makes sense.
this turn is really difficult and on the A flat here because you don't have fingers left unless you do a very tricky thing to change fingers but that's really not very 18th century like that's another topic fingers fingers in that detail so substitutions so changing your finger on the same note is something we do often today and it's not very much documented in the 18th century so i would suggest first uh, idea not to play that turn also e. C, yeah. Again, I'm sharing with you really my first uh, ideas on that. These are long Vorschläge, Apparaturas. I don't know. It sounds right. And it is really difficult to really tell what these ornaments and how they should be played. For some, of course, we, do, we know, like the first one here, this mordant and the turn. But like the Vorschläge, that's really difficult. Emmanuel Bach is writing very clear on those but he's one of the few actually so an Emmanuel Bach's idea if, if I'm right these are long aperture to us so taking uh, taking up the half of the next note but again those are first ideas Concerning making fingering, this is not so difficult because you have a clear left hand situation where you have these, uh, these um, how do you call that, these uh, notes, uh, this which represents the chord, the E flat major chord, uh, arpeggio like, and then in the right hand you have the, you have the trill, so you have to find the fingering that really works for the positioning, repositioning of the hands. And we'll do that. The only difficult thing here though, tricky thing is that E flat major is not an easy uh, key because in the 18th century, you would not want to play this E flat major beginning arpeggio like this. Because on the clavier chord, certainly on the harpsichord it's easier, but even then, you hear? If you really go to the end of the keys, it's rather impossible to make sounds. So we want to stay before the, in this case, white keys. So we can do like this, or just start with the fifth finger, but then switch to the positioning on the front, which would require us to make it a little bit non degat which serves the effect is a kind of uh, happy happy i would say um, what's the right word in english not happy it's uh, festiv festivity like beginning so the rest is the same yeah, i would start with four four two one and just go there here again, five, four. It's re repositioning your hand. So not here. If you want to hear what can go wrong on a clavichord, so the positioning of the fingerings is fingers is very important on the uh, clavichord but for the rest actually I shouldn't add much fingering because it's easy it's always 
the same. Also here. Take that on the front. Okay, and then the right hand. That needs a decision what ornament I'm going to keep or not. Where is hunting? I see. There is must be very not very pleasant to look. You know what? I just go in the webcams menu and I try to switch off the autofocus and then the hunting should be okay. So, I have to start with the first string, and then you see, also if you read CPE Bach, first fingers on black notes, on half notes, halbe tone. That's not often done, but E flat major is a difficult key, and I have to play this E flat with my third finger. So it's it makes sense to start with, with, with the first and then you see actually that this music is not it's not beginner's music and often you hear that symphonias and not these inventions but actually also the symphonias is easy music but it's really not it's full of exceptions exceptions to some rules that you can read in CPE back and later regarding fingering and other things it's it's an up step for the partitas and then you have to release your hand try to keep the hand position so the hand really in the, in the closed form but again i have five one three two it's not possible because i have to play this trill so i have to make Change the three into four. Yeah, and there I have the first finger on the A flat. And my fingers are really deep in the keyboard. I could avoid that by taking the A flat and the C with one and five. But again, that would be another exception because Emmanuel, of Emmanuel Bach, but if you read on fingerings in the 18th century, this is something that's an exception. Because why would you have take a third with one and five and not with two of and four, I mean, with, with the logical fingering? But the situation makes the exception. You could do, I could imagine, to have 3 1 but also 5 1. So then 3 1. And I just go with my fifth and second finger, replace them. And again. And it's, it makes sense because if there is an articulation, kind of phrasing, and an accent. Dun, 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 dun. So this just, just not jumping, but it's gliding with the same fingers. It's true. From one note to another is very, very normal in 18th century. And you know, then if you write a finger like that, it's like um, you, you get a very clear sight, a clear view on, on on, on the music that you're playing. You don't have to do tricky things all the time. And here there's no possibility but to write in one. So constantly you are between the overtones, between the half tones, which is, which really requires you to have a to search for the best position on the keyboard, just go to the first finger. So, and then what always surprises me if you 
and really like this i wasn't expecting that but if you write the fingerings and you search for the for, for correct uh, triads thank you martin to uh to write the fingerings and really search for a very economical fingering because that's what the 18th century fingering was actually also early 19th century and you could say actually really the whole 19th century was 18th 19th century was really searching for the most economical fingering and in the 18th century we had to do with deal with historical keyboards which have a little bit narrow keys and for sound production unlike the piano you need to play at best on the front of the of the keys so as you start doing that it's like it makes sense that the composers took all those things into account so you see that it works out at the end fifth finger okay so two lines fingerings i think that is enough of procession because I think it's very I can imagine it's rather fatiguing to listen to me um, out loud thinking on making fingerings it's important though and last session we mentioned I mentioned that for most music I make I make really really detailed fingerings and myself um, so Mozart, no Mozart Dobbs Gabe, no fingerings, I'll buy that. Uh, Haydn is more difficult. And the Haydn edition, Urtex edition has really bad fingers, I will cross them out. Or, and it depends, if I have to play it on concert or if I make a YouTube video of that, it's different because of course on YouTube for recording, you can rely more on um, experience and and certainly for later 18th century music like, like Haydn and Mozart, it's less complicated in French, it's not all, but in general, it's less complicated than Bach. So for Bach, I will always make very, very detailed fingerings. And the good thing about that is that once you've done that, you'll never forget a piece. So from each piece I've done, so we're going to play the first one. So each, each piece that I have um, finished, I typically make a copy and a scan. And that scan will be uploaded on my computer and will be also backed in the cloud server. So because imagine having all these works with fingerings and one book like this with all the partitas and I don't know what else is there, Goldberg variations. Which I would, I, I play a concert and I forget my book or it's stolen or it's, I mean, that's years of work. So I really make sure that I have my fingerings back up, copied and in the cloud. Okay, there we go. The first Symphonia was one that we, uh, I studied last week very slowly, like we did to the fourth one now. And we'll see what happened. I will talk with you um, some 10 minutes or 15 minutes on how I normally practice that. So I don't expect a beautiful uh, performance now. I really am working on the piece and I will see how it goes. And I will see how it goes. that there is not very much that uh, is really appealing. So articulation is really off and I'm just playing too fast. Um, typically, I would play it a few times like this, but actually, if I would be honest with you, it would make much more sense to play it slower. So again, 
to really allow myself by my, my brains, the few that are left and are working, so to say, to really stay on topic. difficult to so make a phrasing here an articulation right hand so the soprano is really legato the alto voices and then the left hand has team entrance and a big jump difficult so I have written here a fifth finger but if I'm really keeping that I have inevitably here a big gap because I need time to reposition my hand the good thing about that is it's this is a team entrance and so by replacing my hand very slowly so we are really relaxed like we did in the fourth one but I'm afraid that I don't have the time for that because in the soprano that wants to continue, so let's try. So either I have to rush and that's not beautiful. And by the way, that's kind of releases that I was talking about in the aftertrots on the E major fugue. Um, that release on, on the clavichord is difficult. I see a question here from Claude. Let's see. Does your fingering also work for piano because it has a different touch? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in most cases it does, but the piano requires a little bit more of legato touch. So you, you, would, you would actually do um, have a little bit more of these substitutions and a little bit more of i would add a little bit of sustaining pedal if i would play it on the on the on the piano the reason is that the yeah it's difficult to explain why the, the, the general technique is different we come back on that in, in future episodes here and maybe it would be a good uh, topic for a q a session i have to think about that it, it it's the basic is the same but it's different. So we, I come back on that. I remember your question. So here and this the steam entrance of the left hand, I really would give this should continue really. So I think I will change the fifth finger here and the first finger, which again is not very well in the line of 18th century sources. So, so, so this drum would is really normal, but I would you see what, what, what it, how it goes. That's better. So and then Mr. Discipline himself is taking his pencil and changing that fingering. I'm not Mr. Discipline at all, but I must tell you, if I change the fingering like that, and typically all fingers that are changed, certainly with Bach, I will uh, correct them. Because if you play a concert, you will you surely will play what's written. And if that's not what you've practiced, you might get into trouble. rushing too much, listen. This the computer can play. That's better, you feel that I hear I'm back on a heavy beat. team 
entrance. I would really like to phrase it a little bit, but the alto first. So. so I just wait a little bit to give the left hand just enough time to make this team entrance clear to your audience without waiting too long because this this line should continue. Clavichord is helping, of course, because I can use as well the um, difference in volume by making this alto voice a little bit stronger. It gets a natural accent, and by having a natural accent, I can wait a little bit longer, giving the left hand its time to uh, have the theme entrance. Because if I don't do, and I'm, again. I'm just really thinking out loud now with you. Um, I've not prepared to prepare this. If I do nothing in the left hand, almost nobody except the ones who know the piece very well will, will hear that there is a theme entrance. And even if you would know the piece very well, it, even then I should make it clear to you. So I will make the alto voice a little bit stronger and see what happens. So those two <laughs> tiny elements, really huge deal, because now you have this three-dimensionality, but by doing nothing actually. Proportion is not okay, but for that I need to play the piece a little bit longer. That's something that will not happen uh, in one day in, or in one week. That needs some time, certainly with this music. It's, it's really complicated. Also first note. How long are you going to play that first note? There is a rest. So if you play it too long, the beginning becomes very undynamic. Like, oh yeah, we started, but the timing of that first note, that decides your tempo of your whole piece, because, listen. Making it too long. Making it exact. So how do I, how do, I do that? Just by a very soft release, but the release should be uh, there before the quarter note, so I'm not staying on the C. The weight of my hand goes out of the key, and it's completely out of the key when the second beat is there. And it's different. Listen, I I play it first with all the weight of my hand in the key until the second beat, and then I will lift the weight of my hand out of the key while playing the first beat. And listen to the difference. And again, second note has more this, and then difficult because the right hand is going down, left hand is going up, and that's the difficulty with this, the inventions where you have the two parts constantly shifting, uh, going up, going down, right hand going up, left hand going down, even within one hand. But of course, in the symphonias, you have the same difficulties, but in in three voices and like in the fourth one I'll be coming back on that when we do the this performance thing um, there it gets really tricky because you have it in one hand okay there we go I mean, I cannot follow anymore. I'm again 
a little bit too fast maybe. impression I have now and that's something to close this uh, session with is that this uh, first symphonia has much content so to say and that what I'm feeling now it's it, it, you I hope you hear that the piece is developing while playing and while these sessions continue and you have to let me know if we go through all the symphonias then we will need I think maybe 10 sessions, I will do that, it's fine with me, or that we have five sessions and then switch to another series of music. But if towards later uh, sessions, I will play more and more because more pieces will be uh, in my fingers, so to say. And then I typically play them a, a lot of times just after each other. I made two repeats now, but I will have four five repeats and then the music is really developing tempo is changing a little bit and balance is, is shifting and, and yeah many things can happen by itself but just by having this fingering I'm able to and you are too to just um, yeah get this piece very quick in your fingers that's uh, the good thing okay I just got to your uh, not five, ten sessions. Okay, Josh, we do that. Um, and again, um, it's great to have you here. You're really an experimental group for me because the beta beta version version group. It's uh, I have to find out, or we have to find out, how we're going to continue this. For me, it's very nice to share this information with you. I have to find my voice in this, like for the spoken videos on. Um, on the channel of course I can prepare them I have a scripts if I'm well prepared I can edit this is live it's in English and after talking 20 25 minutes in English I hope you can hear that it's going it's better but sometimes just find my words and I cannot do it again or look something up so it, I have to find my voice and but we'll see how it goes and I will listen I will um, I will, I will, I will uh, listen to you, and we will together make make this uh, series to something that you can benefit from. And actually, I'm benefiting from it, from it too because I'm working much more disciplined than I'm usually. So I try to be disciplined, but playing music is also 
enjoying sometimes sight reading things and not always very meticulously playing. But with Bach, um, that's music that that I don't. Yeah, maybe Miklos Spani can sight read that, but for the rest, I don't know many people who can sight read even uh, inventions inventions of Symphonia. So why not practicing it and from the first time? Um, okay. One of the ideas, and that's uh, to close the session, is to have live Google Hangouts. But I don't know. So in that case, you would not only be able to listen to what I'm saying to you, but you could um, talk. It's just a mute button that you can press on unmute yourself, and then I will hear you and others will hear you too. But I think these sessions are limited to 20 or 25 people. I have to find out. So. Great that we live in a time where all these things are possible. So thank you for uh, watching again. This session will go online one of the coming days, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. I have to see because on Saturday, I think, as I said in the beginning, we have Pachel Bell. Um, and again, if you have remarks or suggestions or just ideas, write it in the comment box either on the first uh, live stream, which is up online already or on this one and we keep fine-tuning that thanks for being here i hope it was a good night for you and we see each other very soon again see you later bye